Three completely inaccurate things you've probably heard about posture correction are one, that this hands back position is kyphosis, two, that stretching your pectoral muscles will solve this issue, and three, that strengthening your back muscles in general will help you restore your posture. In this video, I will challenge the most common misleading ideas around posture correction programs and expose the truth, and also provide a four-step process that will help you fix your posture permanently. So let's start with phase one, which is clearing the mist around this topic and exposing the truth. I'm going to talk about three common misconceptions and then explain the cause of this condition, which is essential in order to proceed with solving it. Understanding a problem comes always before fixing it. So let's begin with the first. This is not kyphosis. But let me explain. The normal and healthy posture of the spinal column is characterized by lumbar lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and cervical lordosis. In medicine, this is called the neutral spine. An increase or decrease in these natural curvatures results in different postural aberrations that can mean trouble. In the case of the thorax that we discuss in this video, the neutral and healthy curvature of the thoracic spine is called kyphosis. Yeah, you heard that right. The word kyphosis is used to describe the neutral position of the thoracic spine, which is the optimal scenario for everyone. By the way, the word kyphosis is etymologically derived from the Greek word kyphos, which means hump. Now, the exaggerated curvature of the thoracic spine is called hyperkyphosis, while the loss of its natural curvature results to a degree of hypokyphosis. To be more specific, according to Rogani et al. in 2017 and Katzman et al. in 2010, normal kyphosis angles range between 20 and 40 degrees. So for those of you that are getting their goniometers ready, remember that normal posture is defined between a range of angles and not as a specific value. So today we are discussing how we can fix hyperkyphosis, which is the exaggerated curvature of the thoracic spine, also called hunchback or humpback. Our goal then is to go from hyperkyphosis to kyphosis. The second misconception is that the reason that your back is curving to the front is increased tightness in the pectoral muscles which are pulling you forward and therefore they need to be stretched. Seeing people propose that tight pectoral muscles curve your back makes me think that they don't really understand the function of these muscles. The main function of the pectoral muscles is the adduction of the arms and the rotation of the arms forward around the axis of the body. As you can see, I can keep my spine straight even though I'm completely contracting my pectoral muscles and use their maximal range of motion. So even if they were so tight that they could involuntarily bring my arms forward, they still couldn't interfere with the position of the thoracic spine. These muscles have a lot to do with the condition of rounded shoulders that I will talk about later on this video, but not with hyperkyphosis. So stretching or strengthening your pectoral muscles cannot have a direct effect on your thoracic spine. And misconception number three is that strengthening your back muscles in general with various exercises will solve your posture. We often see well-developed athletes having poor posture while sometimes skinny or even underweight people that might exercise meditation or low impact activities having perfect alignment. If muscle had to do the work, then this wouldn't be the case. Don't you know anyone that is completely untrained but has good posture? In the case of hyperkyphosis, we are dealing with the spine. This means that any exercise for the scapula or shoulders will have no direct results. For example, I can have a full contraction of my scapula while maintaining a completely wrong position in my thoracic spine. That's because the position of my scapula doesn't directly affect the position of the spine. So forget about all these exercises. Here, we are dealing only with the spine. Our main concern is the activation of the erector spiny muscle group in combination with the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. I'll show you how to do that in the solution part of this video. Moreover, from the standpoint of a coach, for every single skill set that we want to improve, aside from all the general exercises and preparation, we still have to dedicate most of the training process to the specific skill set itself. This means that if you want to become better at basketball, besides all the weight training at the gym, you still have to spend a lot of time playing basketball. 
If you want to become better at holding the position of a plank, you have to spend a lot of time in a plank. Surprisingly, all the posture gurus out there will propose any sort of exercise for fixing hyperkyphosis, except systematic and planned practice of the position that we want to be good at, which is holding kyphosis. Of course, general muscle strength is essential for every moment of our lives, and if you're not already in a program, the time to do it is now. This will have a direct positive effect in every aspect of your life, but not exercising is not the main factor that deformed your posture in the first place, and thus it's not the main solution for this particular issue. And these were the three misconceptions I was talking about. Now that it's clear that this condition is called hyperkyphosis, that stretching your pectoral muscles cannot directly affect the posture of your thoracic spine, and that general muscle strength will not do the work, let's see what causes the increased curvature in your back so you can easily understand how you're going to fix it. So the first thing that can create hyperkyphosis is rounded shoulders. As was pointed out by Singla and Vicar in 2017, hyperkyphosis is often associated with poor posture, including forward head posture and rounded shoulders. Having rounded shoulders is due to an internal rotation and forward position of the shoulders. This rotation creates a rounded shape of the shoulders that is commonly confused with hyperkyphosis. In many cases, the forward position of the shoulders is the only problem in the area and we often see a perfect alignment of the thoracic spine when the shoulders are pushed back to their neutral position. So you might have a combination of these conditions or even only rounded shoulders. Identifying the real issues behind your posture is serious and time-consuming. For this reason, I have created a free postural assessment guide where you can easily evaluate your posture and have a clear picture of the alignment of all your joints. You can find the link in the description. So first thing, make sure that you do have hyperkyphosis. If you identify rounded shoulders, you should definitely try to fix that first because the process is completely different and unless you do it, bringing your thorax to the front will not have any significant effect on your overall posture. To do that, you can simply watch my video on how to fix rounded shoulders. The second force that exaggerates the curve on your thoracic spine is gravity. As I mentioned in my video on fixing forward head posture, if the muscles that keep you in standing position stop activating, you will fall to the front. This is caused by gravity and not because tight muscles are pulling you to the front. Our body is constantly working against gravity and this is the number one force that curves our thoracic spine forward. So the main force that exaggerates the curve in the thoracic spine is gravity and our inability to resist it, which brings me to cause number three, our habits. If you stay all day in a deformed posture, your body will adapt to this position and perceive it as your new normal, thus making it feel normal. However, your joints will be taking more stress, so what you finally get is a posture that increases the strength on your joints but feels natural. This habit creates a lack of body awareness and control of the muscles that act on this area. In addition, since less and less work is demanded of the muscles that support the thoracic spine, it also creates a loss of muscle endurance on the muscles that keep your spine in posture. Now that we made crystal clear what is the cause of hyperkyphosis, let's see the four-step process that will help you correct your posture. Also note that I won't be talking much about sets and repetitions because I have already published a detailed presentation of this program in the description. So step one is ensuring range of motion. Make sure that your thorax has the range of motion needed to go back to its neutral position even for a couple of seconds. If you can do that, you can go to step two or use the exercises from step one as a good activation of these extra angles. However, if you're not able to do that, you'll need to train your body in that extra range of motion. To make things simple, I will propose only two exercises. Use a foam roller or any object that can support you to completely extend your spine. At that point, bring your arms overhead and slowly come back to the starting position. The second one would be a spine extension with elbows on the floor. Don't advance to your palms because this will target the lumbar spine more. Start with your elbows away from your body and slowly close the gap until your shoulders are over your elbows. 
Step two is postural awareness. You might be able to move through the entire range of motion of your spine, but still unable to understand where the right position is. You can easily see that if you ask a friend to assume the right position while you're watching from the side. I promise you that 9 out of 10 people will either go too far on hypokyphosis or continue being in hyperkyphosis. It's a trainable skill that you need to develop in order to be able to assume the correct position at any given time. The only exercise that you'll need here is practicing going from hyperkyphosis to kyphosis next to a mirror. Go back and forth and hold your position for 2 seconds every time you reach the neutral position on the spine. If you don't have a mirror, use your phone on selfie mode. By practicing this movement and taking feedback through the mirror, you will quickly gain a good understanding of the range in which the spine is considered neutral. Third step, some people have the range of motion needed and can quickly understand where the neutral position is, but they can't hold this position for a prolonged period of time. For this reason, step 3 is about exercising muscle endurance. First exercise is with the back against a bench or a couch. From this position, move from hyperkyphosis to the neutral position and hold it for an amount of time. The second and probably the best exercise to increase muscle endurance is fortunately holding the neutral position itself. This means just holding the correct position. I think that most of the coaches don't say that because they don't want to look like they want to train posture simply by staying in posture. When I first started as a coach, I was subconsciously afraid that my programs might look too simple, which made me plan unnecessary training systems that in my mind would make the program look more comprehensive. It took me some time to understand the value of keeping things simple. As with almost every activity that we want to get better at, we need to keep most of our energy for the activity itself. You can practice this by holding the neutral posture in different positions for time and sets or by holding this position in specific moments throughout your day. Step number three comes hand in hand with step number four, which is changing your habits. No matter how much time you put into your practice, if you keep spending hours and hours out of posture, your body will choose to adapt to this. 8 hours out of posture is a much greater stimulus for your body than 10 minutes of posture correction exercises. So simply train your endurance in this position at the times during which you were previously destroying your posture. Thus replace a bad habit with your endurance training from step 3. This is going to be tough only for the first few days because the muscles that support us in standing position are designed to work without really feeling them activate. When you're standing, there are hundreds of muscles that work in order to keep you in position, but you don't really feel them. The same thing will happen with your back posture after a few days. I found out that the best strategy is to schedule reminders throughout your day and most importantly at the hour that you know that you'll need them most. You can do this just with your phone's alarm or use more sophisticated devices like upright which vibrates and sends notifications every time you get out of posture. Besides that, you'll need to adjust the environment according to your body and needs. Adjustments like this would be placing your screen higher, choosing a better chair or taking a more comfortable position when you're on your phone. Also note that no posture is bad for a small amount of time and that even the best posture should be altered by different positions and movement every now and then. To summarize what we saw, a postural correction program starts by first understanding the problem and then fixing it. The term kyphosis is used to describe the neutral position of the thoracic spine, and when we are talking about a hunchback or humpback, we are actually talking about hyperkyphosis. The forces that create hyperkyphosis are rounded shoulders, gravity and habit. Fixing hyperkyphosis comes first by ensuring that you have already dealt with rounded shoulders. Then you can use this four-step process. Ensure range of motion, regain postural awareness, develop muscle endurance, and rid of the habits that deform your posture. I really hope that you practice these steps and I'm waiting to hear about your progress in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends who want to fix their posture and do me a big favor by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.